Good morning and welcome to the Battle Creek Area Chamber of Commerce's Eye Opener Breakfast. My name is Kara Beer and I am the president of the Battle Creek Area Chamber of Commerce here in Battle Creek, Michigan. Thank you for joining us today for our annual, or annual, for our monthly Eye Opener Breakfast. This month, our topic is cannabis in the greater Battle Creek area. Um, we've had a numerous amount of questions from our members and community members asking about cannabis in our communities and really wanting to take the time to share with all of you a little bit more knowledge of what's going on from the standpoint of our elected officials um, and the, our government entities that mandate and rule um, and govern our local municipalities um, in regards to cannabis as well. So we are very fortunate that we have um, Emmett Township on today and the city of Battle Creek to go through all of this with us. Um, but first, let's go ahead and get started with all of our wonderful chamber information that we need to do um, prior to diving into our topic today. So just the agenda for today's um, event, we are here to say welcome. Um, we'll talk a little bit about our chamber champions and the opportunities that lie ahead in the next year. Um, we'll do what's called who's in the Zoom rather than our who's in the room. We'll do who's in the Zoom and you will be going into breakout rooms today um, to introduce yourselves so that you can have a little bit of time um, introducing yourself to smaller groups. We will welcome our new members. We'll thank our member anniversaries. We will be doing our fall into the, fall into the arts um, winner announcement. And then we'll be going over our ribbon cutting celebrations that we've had recently. And then we will dive into our presentation with the city of Battle Creek and Emmett Township. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about some upcoming events that we have going on in the community and we'll close out the meeting at nine o'clock. So um, buckle up because it's a lot of information and a lot of great feedback and um, understanding that we're hoping that you guys get from today's presentation. All right, so first up is our 2020-2021 Chamber of Champions. We'd like to say thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, Consumers Energy, Firekeepers Casino Hotel, Motor Shop Electrical Construction, Omni Community Credit Union, Kellogg's, Bronson Health System, CTS, Wargis, Blue Ox Credit Union, CTI Mechanical, Penfield Animal Hospital, and Rossler Metal Finishing. So I want to say thank you to all of you. Your support of the Chamber of Commerce has been outstanding this year. You guys have gone above and beyond um, for us and we have really, really, really appreciate everything that you've done. Um, with our Chamber of Champions, we were able to do another round of our um, Chamber gift certificate programs. That's what we use that money for this year. Um, we are just really delighted with all of the work that we've been able to do with Chamber of Champions. All right, so thank you to all of those. Next up is who is in the Zoom? And so we are actually going to do, um, let's see, how many do I have on? Okay. So at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to um, have you guys do your, you're gonna join your breakout room. You're gonna do a quick um, introduction. Um, with each other, really saying your name and your business organization, and then we'll pull you back in in a few minutes, okay? So right now, it looks like you're going to have about seven to eight people in your room. All right, so I'm going to break you up and go from there. That is the dumbest thing ever. Thank you.
Thanks for joining, Sienna. No, you're not. Welcome back to some of you. We're gonna give it a second just because I know some of you are still coming back from your room. Hopefully you were able to introduce yourselves to all of those that were in um, our event today. Um, you've got a smaller group to do your introductions to. Um, just because of the fact that we wanted to make sure we had enough time to get through everything today. All right, so we want to say welcome to our new members. We have Nobo, we have Nick Taylor, who is an individual, and Payless Liquors. Thank you for joining us. Um, we greatly appreciate your support of the member organization here at the Battle Creek Area Chamber of Commerce. Next up, we want to say a huge congratulations and thank you to our member anniversaries. These are businesses that have paid continuous membership into the organization. Um, these are the milestone years. And so first up, for 35 years, we'd like to say thank you to the Battle Creek Community Foundation, Battle Creek Hot Air Balloons, Vasco Water Treatment, Fisher Spiegel, Kunkel, and Gerber. Um, thank you so much for 35 years of continuous support. And it's hard to do clapping when you're on a Zoom, just so you know. Um, 30 years is Duncan Aviation, 15 years, Battle Creek Roofing and Insulating, Radiation Oncology or Radiation Consultants, PLC, Westbrook Place Apartments. Um, at 10 years, our Edward Joan Investment Groups um, here in town have been members of the Chamber of Commerce. We have our Family Fair in Urbandale, Family Fair in Penfield, and Family Fair in Lakeview. Congratulations on 10 years. And then five years is Kemp Family Funeral and Cremation, Michigan Chamber of Commerce, U.S. Staffing Agency, LLC, and Integrated Health Partners. Thank you so much for being a part of our organization for this many years. We greatly appreciate your support and your continued membership with our organization. So big round of applause um, for those folks. Next up on... We had to do a little shuffling. We did, I'm not gonna say pivot. We had to do a little shuffling um, because originally our fall into the arts was scheduled for October 15th. Um, for those of you who don't know, that is when one of the monsoons that we've had recently has happened. Um, and Art Walk is an outdoor event um, where we ask our artists to set up outside along the linear path. And um, when you have a monsoon, that tends to be a not so good moment. Um, and so we decided to pivot a little bit and we were able to schedule um, on October 29th, I believe is the date. Um, it was the last Friday of October. We were able to move the art walk inside of Kellogg Arena um, and have an indoor event where we had over 43 artists set up inside. Um, and then we also promoted the downtown origami sculptures 
um, as well as part of the art walk and getting people out and about. We handed out brochures on where they could find them, who did those. Um, it was a great event. We had a steady crowd. Um, you know, being the last Friday and the Halloween weekend um, was definitely an interesting um, battle for, uh, for people's attention because there was so much going on. Um, but we are very grateful for those that attended. Um, it was a free event to come in and check out art. Um, we are greatly appreciative of all of the artists. There was some phenomenal work that was done, um, but also just a great deal of um, talent that we have here in our community. So we want to say thank you to those that participated in the art walk. And ooh, it did not. There we go. Um, it jumped right over it. So we are very excited to announce that we had some great pictures taken for the art walk that we're able to share and our second place winner of our People's Choice Award, which is um, an opportunity for folks to vote that are there, um, went to uh, Zena, who is an artist, a local artist. She is a fine art um, artist. She is up in your right-hand corner. Um, and this is one of her works right there above her head. So congratulations to her. And our first place People's Choice winner goes to Jamari, which is the second time she has won Fall Into the Arts. Um, but she is extremely talented. And for those of you who are wondering, she is also a bear cat. So congratulations to our two outstanding winners for People's Choice Awards. Um, truthfully, all of our artists were winners. They did an amazing job. Um, if you can look at this, um, this screen right here, the bottom right, those three talented um, artists and the bottom are all high school students that are part of the Battle Creek Public Schools art department. And we were just really thrilled. They brought their potter's wheels and did actual live demonstrations of them doing their potting. Um, and so that was really, really awesome to have the youth engaged. We had people from a very young age all the way through um, senior citizens that were doing art. Um, the art center had a large group of folks that were a part of that, but also um, doing art at the event. And so it was more of a live um, event where people could see art being done. Um, we had, you know, Kingman Museum was there. That was really a great eye opener for some folks. Um, and then as you can also see is the model train um, club was actually able to bring the large scale train set um, up into Kellogg Arena and have that going on. And so um, just a lot of really great things that happened at Art Walk. Um, we greatly appreciate those that attended and we're very proud of our People's Choice Award winners. All right, so moving on. Oh, I, gosh, it keeps skipping us. <laughs> Nope, sorry, it's not doing what I need it to do. It does, oh, there it goes. Um, so one of the other things that we did during Fall Into the Arts was we actually had, um, it was also the weekend of the big game of MSU and U of M. And we were very fortunate to have the South Michigan um, Food Bank be a part of our Fall Into the Arts. We did, rather than doing a can drive during the event, we did an MSU versus U of M dollar drive competition. Um, and we made sure that folks knew that for every dollar that we had contributed into your favorite team's canister, provided six meals for someone in need in our community. And so we are delighted to say that we raised $250 at the event which equated to 1,500 meals here locally. Um, just a, a huge thank you to those that contributed to that. Um, we greatly appreciate your contributions to that, but also 1,500 meals out into our community is outstanding and we can't thank you all enough for that. Um, especially um, with us being able to um, rework that and be able to get that involved um, and we are really appreciative that the Michigan Food Bank was able to come and um, join us that day. All right, now let's talk ribbon cuttings. Um, we have had a large number of ribbon cuttings over the year. Um, we, we focused on um, just this last month here in just a second, but I just kind of wanted to just point out a couple different things for you. Um, in the top left corner, you're gonna see it's the Kiwanis Club. 
um, and their outdoor park and pavilion. So if you haven't been able to get out there, it is definitely something that you want to check into. Um, there's great opportunities for you to host different events there, um, and you contact the Kiwanis Club for that. Then you also have right below that is HandMap. HandMap did their final or their grand opening um, for us this summer. And, and I laugh because they opened during COVID. So almost at the year mark, they did their grand opening. Um, and we were able to be outside and just the amount of supporters for HandMap here locally is outstanding. So thank you. To the right of that, you're going to see the new pavilion that was just done for the Wolf Pro Project at Binder Park Zoo. Um, I believe that it was what that one was. Um, but that is just one of those ones that we have. You can see that we have masks on. So um, it was in one of those heightened moments of, of COVID um, in our community. And right beneath that is the opening of the seven BC cargo units that we had. Uh, we were able to pull all of our cargo units in on that, and we did one large ribbon cutting for them. Next up in the top left, you're going to see at the Burma Center, that was at the Catching the Dream um, Learning Center, which is the new school for the youth. Um, and so that is something where um, we were very delighted to be a part of that. That was a great ceremony. Um, if you were able to attend, you surely enjoyed as much as we did. Um, beneath that, we have P&K Deals, which is right there next to Circa 6 and Domino's right there on Capitol Avenue. And that is um, a new place that has opened up. Um, lots of great support. Um, Kiana um, is a great, great person for our community and great cheerleader. And now they own a business. Um, great deals there, as you can tell. Um, but if you haven't gone in and checked that out yet, make sure you do so. To the right of that, you can see Salon K. Salon K, again, another one that opened during COVID, was able to do a grand opening right there. Um, we were able to showcase her new space um, as well as Out on a Whim, which is the retail shop right in front of the salon. So if you haven't checked out that salon yet, be sure to do so. And right below is the next new business in downtown, which is Bread and Basket, which is um, Tiffany Blackman. Um, one of our former ambassadors, she, she's done a lot of different things, but now she is a small business owner right here in downtown. Um, if you haven't checked out that store, there's great unique gifts that you want to make sure that you check out. All right. So next up, we have on September 23rd, we were able to do a ribbon cutting for Breeze Provisioning Center right there on Columbia Avenue. If you haven't checked that out yet, be sure to do so. Um, it is a farm. If you have, are interested in learning a little bit more, you can check out our Facebook page where we did a field trip Friday out onto the farm with Breeze and ask lots of different questions. Um, it may be able to help you in some of your thought process on this as well. And then on October 1st, we went to Western Michigan University at the College of Aviation. And we were able to, on Dave's last day, Dean Powell's last day at Western Michigan University, he did a special ribbon cutting for the Battle Creek Area Chamber of Commerce, which we then also did a tour and film that that is on our YouTube page and on Facebook. Um, just a really remarkable new facility here in town. I know Tammy's now working out of there as well, um, but just a great, great, great asset to our community. It's outstanding. It's beautiful. Um, and everything in it has a purpose and a thought put behind it. So um, if you are interested in learning a little more, check out our Facebook page and find that video. And then on October 29th, as I said, it was not only Fall into the Arts, but we also cut ribbon for Novo's Provisioning Center right there on Main Street. Um, if you have not been able to jump in and see them, please do so. As you can tell, it was Halloween. They don't really always have uh, webbing all around their front door. It was a Halloween party as well. So um, thankful for all of the new ribbon cuttings that we've had. Um, gracious to all of you for inviting us to be a part of that. And then on November 1st, we were able to open up Payless Liquors. Can anybody guess where Payless Liquors is? It's in the old Payless store, I'll just tell you. All right, so that is right there on Columbia Avenue. Um, Payless Liquors, new store. Um, lots of great, it's just amazing the amount of, 
alcohol that is in that store. Um, it is definitely a place to check in and see if you are looking for something special and you're on that side of town, stop into Pay Less Liquors and make sure you mention that you are a chamber member and you saw them today at their ribbon cutting. All right, without further ado, all of you guys are here for a special presentation today on cannabis in the greater Battle Creek area. We are very fortunate to have um, two wonderful speakers that will be talking, well, three um, that we'll have in regards to, we have the city of Battle Creek and I believe Marcy is going to be taking this and I'm gonna unmute her in just a second. Marcy Gillette, who is our um, city of Battle Creek representative that's gonna tell us all about cannabis um, and how we got to where we are, how many licenses we have, how many are available, um, what does the money go for in regards to the permit process. Um, um, there's about seven questions that I gave them early on so they know um, which you guys have all seen. And then we also have um, Emmett Township Supervisor Deb Bell, as well as Cindy, who is her marijuana specialist with Emmett Township that will be discussing this as well. So. I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over, <coughs> excuse me, to Marcy first. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself um, and tell them about what position you are and a little bit about what's going on, we can um, move on to our other presenter as well. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, Marcy Gillette, City of Battle Creek. I'm the Community Services Director. Under Community Service, four divisions, planning and zoning, inspections, code compliance, and community development. So there are a couple of divisions that touch on marijuana. Um, so as I think Deb will get into for Emmett Township, um, instead of having one individual who um, maintains all records in the process for marijuana. We use a variety of different staff and different divisions that all touch on that. Police department, city attorney's office, our city clerk's office is a lead office for the application and intake and processing of those. And then certainly other divisions that have um, approvals throughout that process. So for the city of Battle Creek, uh, we first began our discussions in 2017 related to medical marijuana. We did a city commission workshop in August of that year. And as part of that, we felt it was important to solicit resident input and feedback in regards to how the community felt in, in welcoming a medical marijuana um, allowance in the city of Battle Creek. So as part of that process, we did a um, mass mailing and had an online survey that reached um, just around 14,000 residents. And of those um, that were sent out, we did receive around 700 um, responses that a majority were in support of allowing medical marijuana um, in the city of Battle Creek. So then um, February of 2018, our city commission um, moved forward with an eight to one vote to approve medical. And then moving forward, recreation, we did a workshop in July of 2019. And with the support that we had received and uh, the success of businesses for the medical side of things, um, commission decided to move forward with the adult use, and that was adopted October of 19 with a nine to zero vote to support. So that's sort of a time frame um, for the phases of each of the types of medical marijuana in the community. Kara, I don't know um, if you want me to transition into how many we currently have, or if we want to sort of go back and forth between Emmett and Battle Creek. What are, what are I think we're going to go back and forth a yeah. little bit, and um, just so folks understand. When we talk about medical, we'll say medical. And when we say adult use, that is the recreational component of marijuana. Um, just so you know, across the board in the state, that's how it's It's not listed as recreational. You won't see that anywhere. You will see adult use. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Deb. If you wanna do a little bit of an introduction of yourself and Cindy, and then talk about how you got to where you are right now, that would be really helpful. Hi, I am the Emmett Township Supervisor. And when I came on board here, uh, our marijuana was already in place and we had well over 30 establishments and it also passed in a vote. 
So they had already went through the processes of all the businesses when they come on new, they go through the police and through fire inspections and the planning and zoning approvals. And, and then uh, Cindy here has recently joined the team and she makes sure all the licensing is uh, handled in a timely fashion and all the things that go with that. And I'll let her speak on that, but it was already in place when I came on. So, uh, and it was all brand new. So um, just kind of had to sort it out and put some direction as to what we were going to do and how we were going to go forward with it. And I think we've done pretty good so far. So, um, and Cindy, when it comes time, can talk to you about all the licenses that we currently have and different things like that. Great. Cindy, do you want to introduce yourself just so people know, besides the fact that I keep calling you Cindy, the marijuana queen? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm Cindy Kemp, uh, marijuana regulations administrator here at Emmett Township. Um, I came on board um, in June. Um, and a lot of things were already established, um, but um, previous administration kind of we, when they first established it, uh, um, they really didn't have a, uh, like a cap per se. And it, it came to fruition that we did end up having a cap. So bringing that down has been a, um, been a process and, uh, and it's been going pretty good. Um, they are really excellent business and uh, business uh, for Emmett Township and bringing jobs and stuff like that. So we're, we're, uh, we're excited and um, getting in the ring of things. Great. All right, Marcy, if you wanna talk a little bit about um, our next question that we have on the list, you can go right ahead. Okay. What I have next um, is specific to grow operations within our jurisdiction. So the city of Battle Creek uses um, its zoning districts to determine what type of businesses and uses are permitted in each of those districts. So specific to grow, that is um, allowed in our light industrial and our heavy industrial district areas. So again, we keep record of our licensing um, for medical and adult use separately. So for medical at this time, we have eight that are currently active and two that are pending. And for adult use, we have nine that are approved and active and seven that are currently pending. So when we say pending, what that means is that they are somewhere along the journey of receiving, um, receiving their full license to become approved and active and actually be in operation. And that is just grow, correct? That's just grow, yes. Okay. So um, for the city of Battle Creek, you have eight current medical growers yes. and two pending, yes. nine adult youth grow operations and seven pending. That's correct. Okay, sounds good. All right, so Deb um, and Cindy, can you give a little bit of an update of um, the grow operations in Emmett Township? Yeah, so um, we have eight available licenses um, uh, for our grow um, grow licenses. So we have three licenses that are um, currently being held by one um, client, which is Breeze Tucenta. Um, so that's all we have for Emmett Township right now. Zoning. Um, in the zoning areas in which we uh, allow these um, grow facilities is agricultural and um, light industrial. Yep. Great. All right. So the next question that we have on here is how much is the permit annually for these businesses? So one of the things that I'm going to ask each of you is, you know, we talk about the grow operations. What's the difference between a grow operation and a distribution center? Um, provisioning center, that kind of a thing. And, and are they the same in regards to price point? How do you do that? What's the annual amount? What does that go for? All those good, fun details that I know Marcy and Deb and Cindy all have for us. 
I love the confidence, Kara, and all of that that you have for us. Appreciate that this morning. Um, so to touch on a little bit of the other types of licensing, um, so specific to medical, we also have provisioning centers currently in the city of Battle Creek. We have eight that are approved. Processors for medical, we have four currently. And as I mentioned, we have growers, we have, we're at eight. So th those are the three medical categories that we have at this time. For us, whether it's medical or adult use, whether it's a new application or an annual review, annual renew, the amount of the application fee is the same. So it doesn't vary by business type. Um, and the cost for that um, initial application and renewal is $5,000. That fee is established by our fee bond and insurance schedule that's adopted by our city commission. And um, that, that revenue stream for that work, as you can imagine, I mentioned a number of different departments that play an active role in the review, the inspection and the approval of those licenses. And so there's not one um, department that captures that revenue. It actually goes back into our general fund operations. Regarding adult, because I did mention the um, other licenses and the amounts for those for adult use, we currently have nine approved retailers, three active processors, and then again, nine of your um, approved for growing. So areas that we don't have um, are, we don't have anything for transport at this time, um, any of the testing facilities, um, those are businesses that we currently do not have any applications or approvals for licensing. So that brings up a really good question, Marcy, because you talk about there's eight medical growers. And so when the city commission talked about this a while back, a couple of years ago, how many licenses does the city of Battle Creek allow for? And is it separated? Is there so many grow operation licenses that you're able to have? Is there so many um, distribution or is it just as a whole? Yeah, a so good question. So we do not limit or restrict by type of license. Um, as I mentioned, the designation of where they're allowed is based on zoning district. But then there are also, um, we, we call them buffer distancing from businesses and also um, separation by sensitive uses, should we, shall we say. So we have regulations that speak to that operations cannot be within a thousand feet of each other or a thousand feet um, in instances where we have a neighboring jurisdiction and um, places like schools, public libraries, and those types of sensitive uses that we have. So we use a buffering system um, and have, um, since the adoption, we've had an, sort of an online mapping that breaks it up into the different types of licenses so that you can sort of get a visual representation. We have, from a technology standpoint, been working on getting that updated because we've had some glitches with sort of the coding behind the scenes to make that active. So we do utilize um, planning staff to um, be that frontline contact if someone has an inquiry as to whether or not a specific address would be an eligible location. Is there a number that, like, if I do remember correctly, it was something like 49 based upon the geographic map in the city? as to what the maximum could be if you if you built yeah. it all out. You know, staff probably took a stab at um, what that number could be, but I think it could, um, I think that's a hard number to come up with because the different types of uses by district could dictate slight variations to that. So that was probably a ballpark um, due to an inquiry, certainly of either a city commission or a resident that said, what could we be looking at in a maximum number. But I think that there's some flexibility because as we know, specific to grow, we're limited to our light and our heavy industrial areas. And so depending on what those numbers look like and that land mass geography, um, you know, we are third largest land mass in the, in the state of Michigan. 
Um, so that does um, allow for a variety of different type of licensing within the city limits. I just muted myself. <laughs> uh, great, Deb and Cindy, could you tell us a little bit much about how your permit process is and what your price point is? Um, and how does that look and how do you guys categorize the number? Um, I, Cause at one time people were talking about the Emmett Township was unlimited, which you talked about a little bit now and you said you're, you're trying to rein that back in. So Deb if you, and Cindy, if you can kind of give us a little light on this, this would be great. We, uh, they put a cap in just before it came in of 19. I don't know where they got the, how they determined that. Um, we have steadily been working on our ordinance, changing it, always updating it to make sure that we stay compliant with state regulations. Our fees are the same as the city, $5,000. We keep it in a own budget uh, so we can track that money always as there's a lot of regulations with that money and how that can be spent. So we removed it from general fund. Now the excise tax that comes in every year that can be put into the general fund. So uh, that way we regulate because it's to be used for marijuana items. So that pays for a lot of different things that, you know, there's costs now that we have those businesses with different background checks and inspections and things. Um, as, far, as far as the application process, um, it's somewhat kind of the same. Um, it does start off, it goes through uh, many departments within um, the township, uh, public safety, um, fire, um, zoning, planning, um, clerk and myself. So it does go through a number of um, processes throughout the township before approval. Yes, checks and balances, yep. yes. So my question to both of you, Marcy, Cindy, and Deb, is really looking at that. And if I was a business owner looking at putting in a marijuana processing provisioning center, um, you know, looking at it from a standpoint of where do they start? <coughs> Excuse me, you mentioned a number of different departments, but as a business, owner, how, how does that work? How do you give an ease of doing business with your township or your city um, so that it's an, a streamlined process? Because we know that there is a lot of steps that go involved, are involved in how this works. But how do you as um, keepers of that information make this a streamlined process so that it isn't um, full of red tape, I guess I would say. So for the city of Battle Creek, um, all of that funnels through our city clerk's office. So really they're our point guard on the basketball court. Uh, they're bringing the ball down, they're funneling it to the other city departments for their approval. When um, a customer or <clears throat> a potential business owner um, needs some technical expertise, that's when the city clerk's office defers to that specific department to be able to provide assistance to them. But the applications, the review, the um, approvals, denials, need for additional information, that all funnels through our city clerk. Um, and then contact can be made at the department level as that technical assistance is needed. Great. Deb, Cindy? Ours funnel through the regulations and licensing person, Cindy. She makes sure that uh, it has went through the whole process when they pay their 5,000. And uh, if they need additional information, Cindy is the one that reaches out to get that information. And we have quite the checklist that they have to, to meet on that. And then it can go to the planning board from there. And then it ultimately ends up in front of our board of trustees and, and the supervisor for the final say. Great. And so looking at, um, you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit, Deb and Cindy, um, that you keep the money in a separate area because there's some expenses that come along with that. So one of the things that we've been asked from members um, is what, what can you use that money for? Because it, it is a lot of money. I mean, we're talking about $5,000 annually from each business. So my question is for both of you, um, 
outside of that last one I just asked. Uh, <laughs> it's a two part question. Um, one is if you are somebody who is doing provisioning um, and you are a medical and an adult use facility, is that $5,000 for each license? So when you look at those places, like I, I, I see Nobo because she's right next to you on the, on the screen, Jana, <laughs> um, you know, and they do both medical and adult use. So is it a $10,000 fee each year? Is it a 5,000 because they do both? Um, looking at that, but also um, what can you use that those dollars for? So as a taxpayer in those community in our communities, what what's being done with that revenue stream currently um, that I would see the impact from? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, we were in the beginning collecting ten thousand apiece, but then we decided, and we were advised by um our attorney who works up at the state on this that and we you know kind of don't need to gouge so much because it is a lot of money that uh this year starting we are only collecting the one five thousand dollar fee because most people when they start a medical they're going to turn to rec because that's where the money is so they only have to pay the one fee because it is a lot of money and um it can be used for all the internal administrative parts, anything that has to do that. If we have to have police power, part of that, anything that is dealt with marijuana can come out of that currently. Uh, we've been very advised to spend it as that right now. Uh, it's very restricted. So we make sure that we stay within the guidelines of the marijuana money. Um, so Deb, when you, Deb, when you mentioned that, you mentioned more police power. Are you able to use that money right there to hire more police in the Emmett Township Police Department, Public Safety Department with that money? Um, maybe potentially, but uh, right now we haven't seen the need for that. Um, so that's always something to look at. We're still, you know, exploring the different options, but we want to stay within the guidelines because now with the excise tax that comes in, that is, like I said before, unrestricted. So that can go into the general fund and be used for different things. Uh, um, There's also the marijuana fund in which I use to um, administrate and do um, like inspections while we do inspections, anything that pertains to the cost in, in my job. Um, background checks. Background checks. Um, anything that I do comes out of that as well great i'm sorry oh, i'm sorry we haven't really decided on uh the, the board hasn't really decided on where they want to see the excise tax that is unrestricted how they want that spent yet so that's still just kind of sitting there okay marcy yeah very similar to emmett township in regards to the set aside when i mentioned um that our our revenue for application and renewal, when those fees um, come in, they are attributed to a specific line item designated for um, medical and adult use marijuana, um, which sits in our general fund. So each, you know, each business unit and department has a, a number of different line items within general fund. For all of the departments that I mentioned, with the exception of the inspections division, um, that's separate for trades. All of those departments that provide the technical review and inspection for the process of licensing, those are all general fund um, operations. So those departments and personnel are funded with general fund taxpayer dollars. So those fees cover the manpower and also materials, equipment, vehicles, gas, whatever is needed to conduct that work associated with that. So, and for us, it is um, per license. You had asked the question in regards to if you had someone that had dual licensing, is it one registration or licensing fee? It actually is two because those do go through separate review processes, just like those are separate licenses and approvals at the state level. So for us, the process really starts at the state level where this, where someone gets pre-qualified from the state, 
for each of their licenses that they have an interest with. So we handle them separately, similar to how the state does. So looking at this, you know, looking ahead at this, you know, one of the questions that we get a lot of is, are we, do we have more than other communities? Like, because I know like, for instance, there are other communities surrounding us and we have a state that surrounds us that does not have access to adult use or medical marijuana currently. Um, and so we get a lot of visitors that come into our area, um, and, which is great. And, and there is an economic impact of those that are coming in, they're, they're purchasing gas, they're, they're coming in, they're utilizing this area, they're having lunch or dinner in a restaurant. Um, we do see those impacts in regards to the economic impact of the, the visitors to the area. But you know, looking at it from a standpoint of when you're driving down a road, <laughs> I mean, we've all seen it. We've all seen on Facebook, anytime something gets rehabbed, somebody says, oh my gosh, I hope it's not another marijuana shop or it's, you know, those kinds of things. Are we getting to a point where we feel like we've, we've oversaturated the market? Both Deb and Marcy, are you feeling like there needs to be a high, I mean, I know I've spoken with the owners of Breeze, which is in with Deb. I think Deb was actually there with me when we were there talking and Cindy. Um, and they will flat out admit it is uber competitive in our community uh, because we have so many. And so I'm really looking at the two of you to really kind of look at it as, um, you know, the community is looking at, are we, are we oversaturating the market? Um, with these, because we know that there are some places that we have businesses that have been rehabbed and they might not be open yet, but that building is set to be a marijuana shop, either adult use or medical or whatever it may be. It may just be a grow operation, but it's in the middle of town and that's what you know, that's what it is. Um, and so I, I ask either of you, if you want to chime in on that, you may want to say, no, I don't want to answer that. Um, but I just, I'm chiming in to, to see if we've oversaturated the market. Uh, I feel like it was quite a lot when I came on, there was several and maybe too many and our cap is set at 19 and I don't know where they came up with that. And that still might be a bit much for our township, but, um, I think in the beginning, their thoughts were let them come and, and, uh, the strong will survive with any kind of business. And I think that the board still looks at it like that, even with the cap, like the strong will survive. Not every place is gonna make it, honestly, uh, as with any type of business, you know. Um, and I guess that's our approach on that. And uh, what else was I gonna say on that? But we will have a lot of nice new buildings for sure. <laughs> so they're really making them very nice. They are. Marcy, did, did you want to chime yeah. in? You know, in regards to oversaturation, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not able to speak in regards to those that are open and operational, how successful they are right now and what that competition looks like. I'm not that close and, and having that inside information. But what I can say is that um, the last couple of years, the, the business of, of marijuana cannabis um, has been interesting to watch unfold. And I still think that the industry is trying to get its footing. Um, and what I mean by that is that you had mentioned, you made a really good point in regards to there being some businesses, um, some buildings that have been completely rehab designated. There's a license and approval that's ready, but the doors haven't opened. And one of the things that we've seen is that, um, there can certainly be a lot of individual personal reasons why a business is choosing not to open. But one of the areas that we see is that there are investors out there that understand the industry, that know the process of licensing, everything from the state level to the local levels for which they're working. And they're navigating those, um, getting businesses ready, and then allowing um, and making available that license for sale so that someone who might um, not want to work through the process independently of doing that, it's sort of ready for purchase and ready for operation. 
And so um, I think that we may have instances of, of buildings in our community that are at that point also, which can be a reason why they're not in operation right now. Again, I think people are trying to figure out um, how to get in at the beginning and navigate and others who have an interest in being in the industry, but um, receive benefit of purchasing something that's already been put into and ready for operation. Great. So one of the final questions that I have for you guys is really, you know, there's a lot of information and, and we try and share as much as we possibly can that we know from the two of you um, with members who may have questions. We refer you guys to, I mean, we have um, currently, I believe we have six um, cannabis shops that are members of the chamber. We've done ribbon cuttings. You saw two of them already in our ribbon cutting ceremony today. Um, but you know, looking at that and we, we refer them to them to answer any questions they may have. But if there was somebody in the community that was really looking at trying to learn a little bit more about cannabis in our communities, where do they go? I mean, like not, not to get a license, but to understand what the thought, like what this whole presentation has been on, like how many licenses are there currently? Is the building getting next to me going to be a grow shop? You know, the farm next to me going to turn into a grow shop? You know, those are the questions that we're getting. Folks are interested in it, not because they don't, um, it's just they don't understand it. So they're, they're trying to get a better picture of it. Um, where do they go? I know, Marcy, you talked about that you're working with GIS and with the IT department on the active map, because when we first originally did our town hall meetings, I know that that was really, I sent a ton of people to that map. Um, because they could see where they were potentially able to, to put a shop. Um, you know, that would be great. But what are some other recommendations that you would have for the community to um, go and find out more information? I would say the state's website is a very good place under Lara. They have a lot of resources you can reach out for information on how do you get capital for that, things like that. Uh, Going back to what Marcy said about getting buildings ready for basically a flip, we kind of shy away from that. Yes, we definitely shy away from that because we've experienced where people just come in and, and sell their businesses and try to move on forward. And we're putting a process in place for that so that you just can't do that. You have to start that process all over again. We want it to be more of a smooth transition, not only for the business, um, that's uh, trying to open or, or you know, est get established, but for us as well, because when you have someone, you know, uh, you grant them um, authorization or, or a provisional license and um, under the applicant's name, and then you don't hear nothing, you know, that we give them a year to get up and running um, with, um, they're, they gotta be diligent about getting that done and getting their CFO. Um, prior to giving them attestation for their state license. And uh, when someone out of the woodwork comes, it's not even a part of the original application, wanting to know, uh, you know, demanding, making demands for a, an address. And you're like, well, who are you? You know, we try to shy away from uh, the flip scenario. We want the applicant that, that's originally on the application to, uh, to handle it from start to end, um, be, you know, License, yeah, yeah. Licenses aren't transferable for us, you know. So it has to all be approved, pre-approved, with us prior to them making a material change. Great. Thank you both so much for your information today. We greatly appreciate it. Um, this has been very informative. There is always lots to talk about when we talk about marijuana and cannabis, um, and it is ever changing. Um, Deb and mentioned the state website. We did email that out to all of you along with the video. Um, that would be one of the things, and you can see in the chat box, Jana, um, who is with Nobo, did make mention of a local contact for you guys to make mention um, if you have some interest or some interest in following up. I know Breeze is also on here. I think Megan is on, um, but you know this has been one of those um, topics that. We will continue to follow this and, and really go through it. 
on the state level, it is changing daily. I know um, it, it's it's frustrating for business owners. It's frustrating for municipalities and how do we do that? And it's frustrating for our residents because they just don't know what's going on. And so we will continue to be a resource for you. Um, we will keep you abreast of all of the new changes that are going on. Um, I, again, I wanna say thank you, Marcy, and to Deb and to Cindy. Um, your information was greatly appreciated today. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at it from a standpoint of we will bring this back, this topic back. Um, and we will bring back some of those um, amazing provisioning centers to talk a little bit about their experience um, because they are your biggest sales piece on that. Um, you know, one of the questions that we're going to have to figure out is with it being an uber competitive climate here in Battle Creek, um, in the greater Battle Creek area, what happens when we start seeing those drop off? Because that's going to mean it's going to drop off of that general fund. Those, those dollars are going to go away if we don't have that. And it's really interesting to hear. Um, I love to know a little bit more about the process going on in Emmett Township of how you plan to spend those dollars. Um, I think that that's going to be really interesting. Um, and also what the benefits of the, the tax coming in, um, because there is a, a larger state tax on marijuana sales than most people recognize and so how that works. So um, if there are any questions, please use those in the chat box. If not, I wanna say thank you guys for, for being here today. Um, we do have a couple events that we wanna share with you. Um, on Saturday, November 20th is the annual Christmas parade um, here in downtown Battle Creek. We are bringing it back this year, the Grand Marshal. Um, will be in recognition of Jim Demarest, who passed away recently this year, um, this past year. Um, if you are interested in learning more, there is a website out there for the Christmas parade. It gives the route and all of the locations. They have closed the application process for um, floats, but there is a website. And if you're interested, give us a shout and we'll get that over to you. And then also on Saturday, November 27th, which is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, it is the annual nationwide Small Business Saturday where we are promoting shopping small, local here in our community. Um, and to just give you a little bit of enticing, um, it's great to go out there and shop local, but we did just receive word that we will be doing our Holiday Chamber gift certificate program yet again. We will be matching $30,000 dollar for dollar. So a two for one match um, for folks if you are interested. We will be posting dates of when we will be selling those. It'll go to members first, and then it will roll out to our community. So thank you to all of you for joining us today, and we greatly appreciate it, and we will see you soon. Have a great holiday.